In our previous video, we looked at Ohm's law and how metallic conductors are pretty much the only ones that obey Ohm's law because they have a re linear relationship between current and voltage when, well, voltage across it and when current is flowing through it. But there's actually a few more components we need to learn about, which is the semiconductor diode, filament lamp, thermistor, and the last one, the LDR, light dependent resistor. So let's start off with the semiconductor first or what we call the diode. So a diode in real life looks something like this little thing with a white stripe. In circuit symbol form, it looks like this triangle with a line. Diode, hmm, sounds like a LED, right? It is what the LED is based on. And what makes this little friend special is that it only lets current flow in one direction. So it's good if you want to control the circuit, right? So it only lets current flow in one direction and guess which direction it is if the arrow points to the right you only let current flow to the right that's it okay now let's set up a circuit to look at if i put a battery like this and on the other end i'm going to put a diode pointing in this direction okay and i connect it up do you think the diode is going to conduct and allow current to flow as measured by an emitter the answer is Yes, because the battery will push current, flow, 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 flow through the diode, you shall pass, it is allowed, and then flow up and back. So yes, current is allowed, and this is what we call a forward bias arrangement of the diode. Forward bias, number one. Okay, number two, what if you connect it backwards? Well, you see, the diode will oppose your flow of current. So maybe we draw something like this. Uh -uh. Will current flow through this circuit or flow through the emitter as I have added? The answer is no current. It cannot, it just will not allow current. Okay, in real life, a small amount of current will leak through, but maybe we can force some current through later, we'll see how. All right, this is what we call a reverse bias diode because it is reverse and it's not going to help to allow current to flow through the circuit. No current. Okay, so how would the graph look like if we were to draw something like this? Forward bias. Let's assume the positive side is going to have something, whether it's a straight line or curve or curve, we don't know. The negative side, we assume there will not be any reverse current, so we can draw a flat line. Okay, let's draw that properly now. So how this thing works, this, this material called semiconductor, uh, it's a little bit strange thing. You can go and look up a little bit more on the internet if you're curious to know more. But this semiconductor actually doesn't really conduct electricity until you reach a certain voltage. So I'm going to draw something like this. You start off with no, pretty much no, you keep changing the voltage, increase, 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 no current will flow. You haven't activated yet. But the moment you reach a key point, suddenly it will increase. Woo! and go up something like this right so this key point here is oftentimes what we call the knee voltage you know the knee like you bend your leg the knee okay and the 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 uh, what you call this the shape of the graph tells us something about the resistance of this diode do you think the resistance is increasing or decreasing think very carefully what is resistance resistance is not the gradient resistance is the ratio of v over i so based on this graph if you increase the voltage to some big number wow the current get very very big oh so that tells us that the resistance is actually decreasing so i'm going to write here some notes to tell us that the resistance or decreasing resistance this is an iv graph huh? if you flip the graph upside down then please adjust accordingly okay so for each v the I will get bigger and bigger. Okay, so that's pretty much the main thing you need to know. Well, can we actually force a current to flow backwards? Actually, the answer is yes. But we don't really talk about it in A-levels. Maybe in the future, if you study more advanced, then you might see some of that. But, um, right, if you force backwards voltage, what we call a reverse bias on this diode, at some point, it will break down. 
and suddenly there will be a very large negative current that is allowed through this diode. But we draw dotted line because it's, you know, not really in our syllabus. But here's a note that this is what we call the breakdown voltage. Usually you have to go to very high voltage. This graph is not drawn to scale. Okay. Um, other things you need to know how to describe in this graph is other than decreasing resistance and the knee voltage, you need to describe these sections where there is no current, no matter what potential difference you apply across this diode, such as this V, there will be no current. Why? Here is how you can describe it. In this region, there is high resistance, pretty much almost infinite. And hence, no current or negligible current, even if you've got a bit leak through, it's like very, very small. So that will be this part of the graph, the flat part. So if we take this graph and compare it to our metallic conductor, we might be saying, okay, this part, all right, that makes sense with a diode, only allows current in one direction. But on this side, why isn't it a straight line? Why is the, the resistance changing? Why is it a curve? So here's a little side note to add on this side. Why does resistance change? Why does resistance uh, decrease? So when you increase current flowing through the diode, see, we go higher and higher up, right? Bigger, bigger value of current. So we can say as current increase, the temperature of your component will increase. So as current increase, temperature increase. Okay, so this Semiconductor equivalent is, the material is very cute, it's such that when the temperature increase, there are much, 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 much more free charge carriers to come and be contributing to part of the current. So we can say, as temperature increase, uh, as current increase, temperature increase, so there are much more charge carriers, which in... Our case could either be electrons or what we call as holes, which we'll learn more in A2. So there are much more charge carriers uh, to contribute to current. Therefore, or hence, we say that resistance decreases, or rather the ratio of V over I decreases. Okay, so this is our small note for semiconductor diodes. This is what we call also uh, LEDs. LED is light emitting diode, still a diode, or we just call diode. Lah. All right, next, what else do we need to know? The next one on the list is our filament lamp. How is filament lamp different? So what is a filament lamp? If you see a light bulb before in real life, you know, the traditional one, not the LED one, huh? you will see those tiny little wire inside the light bulb. And that tiny little wire, it will glow very bright. That's how you get light. Okay, so you go zoom in a little bit on the light bulb and then you will see that wire. So filament lamp has its own special kind of curve. Do you think it's like a semiconductor? Or do you think it's like our metallic conductor? Straight line. Miss, inside the light bulb is a wire. Wire should be a metal conductor, right? Correct. Almost. A straight line. But eventually, when you get really hot and you're glowing red, your temperature is not going to be constant anymore. So our filament lamp graph looks like this. With current against voltage. All right, take a guess. What do you think it will be like? Let's draw a circuit here on the left. So let's say I have a super big power supply, many, many batteries, because that's how we got to power it. And we're going to connect this to an emitter to measure the current. And then I connect it to a filament lamp. They say filament lamp means you must think of this already. So that would be something like this. Okay, and somehow I have a way to vary the voltage given to this lamp. And I measure that voltage across the lamp with my voltmeter. That's my V. And my emitter measure current. Alright, so for most part, the lamp has a metal wire. Pretty much like a metallic conductor. But as it gets hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter, the array of atoms inside the metal, remember we say in the previous video, there's a lot of atoms here. And then your electron have to travel through all these atoms, travel here, travel here. When it gets very, very hot, 
all these atoms start to dance. They have a lot of energy because heat is related to some kind of <clears throat> preview of A2. When it gets hot, there's a lot of kinetic energy. They all start to shake. Wow, very hot, ah, very hot. So they shake, 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 shake. shake. So there's a lot of vibration and a lot of disruption to the electrons who are trying to pass through this metal wire. So, if your temperature very hot, ah, yeah, you have a problem here. Hot, hot. This is very hot. Everybody starts to vibrate. You will have an increase in resistance. Let's try to explain it first. So the explanation goes like this. As the current through the filament increase, temperature increase. Well, this is the same as semiconductor. So temperature of the wire increase. Filament wire, la, okay, la, temperature of filament increase actually increase a lot a lot to get it to glow so vibration in the lattice vibration in the lattice increase because of so much heat it's kind of like having more energy so they all start vibrating therefore or hence resistance increase also increases with increasing temperature or increasing current okay the main idea here is who is causing all this resistance vibration in the lattice and the effect of this is very significant okay so if you want to draw the graph okay we need to draw something like at first it's kind of straight but then it starts to decrease but don't draw until flat line huh? it does not flat line out like this no 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 it starts to decrease okay on the other side, the lamp allows current to flow both sides. So you can draw the same curve on the other side. This is me trying to do freehand. Yeah, something like this. Okay. So characteristics of the curve. When you see this IV curve starts to curve downwards, that means there's an increasing resistance happening here. And why is there increasing resistance? Well, temperature increases vibration. Vibration makes it harder for electrons to go through the metal. They keep bumping on all these shaking atoms and it's just a bit hard. Okay, so this is increasing resistance on this end. Same for the other side, also increasing resistance in the opposite direction. Because the filament line is pretty chill. You want both ways? No problem. One more curve that we're going to look at is the curve for a thermistor. What on earth is a thermistor? Thermistors generally, or I guess they look very small, sometimes like this black stuff. You can commonly find them in your aircon or in your fridge or anything where you want the computer or circuit to control your temperature. Wow, very hot. Ah. Where's the aircon? Ah, aircon will automatically turn on. How do they know how to turn on? The mister is one of the ways to control the temperature. All right. So the setup is going to be something like this. We'll have some power source, probably a battery. Pass by an emitter so we can measure the current. And let's go down to a thermistor, the symbol for a thermistor. It's going to be like a resistor. But since it's a special type of resistor, we add this thing, this sign. Okay. And then we go back to the battery. All right. So we are going to measure current, amperes, and we're going to measure the voltage. I guess I'll just put it here, voltmeter, across this thermistor. What do you think the graph looks like without Googling? Here's a hint. The interesting note is that this thermistor is like a resistor, but something is added inside it. So the resistance element, this is a side note, this one you don't need to know for exam, but just for your information, resistance element, like the thing inside the thermistor, is made up of not metallic conductor, but some semiconductor material. Oh, where we have, have we heard the word semiconductor material? So scroll back to your notes, rewind the video and check. Eh, semiconductor, how does the resistance uh, change in response to increasing current? That's the first hint already. Okay, so this one, our friend here. Over time, if you increase the current, what is it going to go? Let's, just start, let's write the story out. So as current increase, I'm going to write short form, I for current. As current increase, of course, as usual, temperature of this whole thermistor will increase. There's more current flowing through it. So, more charge carriers. This is a semiconductor. 
hotter than all the charge, all the free electron come out. If it's a free electron. So more charge carriers appear or are available. Okay, so what does that mean? So this is what we call uh, increased conductivity. Hence, conductivity. Is conductivity increase. Therefore, what we say about resistance. Therefore, we can say resistance decreases. Because there is more of these charge carriers to conduct. So you can conclude as current increase, resistance decrease. So let's draw out the graph. It's going to look very similar to a semiconductor. Except that instead of drawing something like this flat and then up, that's for semiconductor diode. This one is thermistor. So there is no limit activation voltage. You just straight away like this. Ah, then can up already. The other side can, can allow. So like this and then go down like that. Okay, so what is this? Decreasing resistance, right? So we can write down some characteristics when we're describing the graph. There is decreasing resistance. Here. Represented by how the curve is curving up. Which is on the same for the negative side. So this is also decreasing resistance. If you send current backwards, it allows current to flow in the negative zone. So just flowing backwards, no problem, also can. All right. Now let's compare a bit the three that we have looked at so far. If my computer doesn't hang. <laughs> okay, so that's our three. Now, you might be wondering, Miss, in the filament lamp, you mentioned a vibration in lattice. Okay, yes, the vibration in lattice contributes so that when current increase, resistance increase. That's the main relationship. But how come for thermistor, current increase, resistance decrease? Don't they also have a vibration in lattice? Yes, there is always vibration in lattice with increased temperature. But the temperature of thermistor and diode may not go as high. And number two, the effect of increased vibration versus increased number of charge carrier is way smaller. So increased vibration a bit compared to the amount of charge carrier that come out when the temperature increase. Ooh, that's insignificant. So that's why the main factor that affects current or affects resistance is different for filament lamp versus the other two. So to end this video, I'm going to tell you a story about two components, the LDR and thermistor. You may have seen them before in IG or Form 5 or other program, but you need to know these two. So once upon a time, a resistor and a semiconductor had two children. The first child is the thermistor. So let's write about the thermistor. This thermistor symbol is going to be this. Okay, let me zoom in a bit more. The idea with the thermistor is that the resistance have another graph. Wow, so many graphs. When this thermistor is very hot, 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 that tells me that the resistance is low. If this thermistor is very cold, then that tells me that the resistance is going to be high. Just because of the semiconductor material and how they are, you know, like that, free, free charge carriers. It's hot, lots of current, lots of free carriers. So free charge carriers, so very high conductivity, low resistance. Let's draw a graph for this. Hmm, so the graph we're going to draw this time is not an IV graph anymore. We're going to take a break from those. We are going to draw a graph of resistance against temperature. T. So this graph <clears throat> will look something like this. Mm, it's sort of kind of inversely proportional, but not exactly. It may vary depending on which level you're looking at AS or A2, but it's generally like that. It does not touch the axis. So... What I mean by hot and cold is if it's very cold, you're on this end of the spectrum, you will get a very high resistance. High lah. R is high. If it's very hot, you'll be on this end of the spectrum, higher temperature, and so you'll be at a very much lower resistance. 
Okay, that's the first one. The second one you need to know is LDR. You just need to know whether the resistance is high or low or not. Huh? So LDR, also a resistor with some semiconductor material inside. But this time, it responds not to temperature. It responds to light. Is it dark or is it bright? So the very first one is, if you are in a very bright condition, there is a lot of light hitting the LDR. This will tell me that the resistance will decrease or it will be very low. Secondly, if it is in a very dark room, dark, no light at all, that tells me that the resistance of this LDR will be very high. Okay, oh, I did not label. Okay, this is number one. This is our third. Mister. Second one, this is our light dependent resistor. Okay, so let's draw our graph. But this time we're going to plot a graph of resistance against light intensity. Intensity. So let's see, when it's bright, very large intensity, resistance very low. Oh, it's going to be the same kind of similar kind of shape. So something like this. Okay. So when it's very high intensity, it is bright. So it'd be somewhere here, for example, and the resistance will drop to very low. If you are in a very dark room, then you will be at a very high resistance of this LDR. It's kind of strange how these things can change depending on the condition of their environment. So to summarize, the first one, we call it like cold resistance. You very cold, you very high resistance. The second one, we call it the dark resistance. Oh, sounds like some kind of fancy movie name of a bad guy. We are the dark resistance. That's what the LDR says. Okay, so that is pretty much the summary of the two things where you need to know how the resistance change and the others where you need to know how the IV graph changes, which is also how the resistance change when you affect the, or you, when you change the current and the potential difference through these objects. Well, that's all for this video. I will see you in the next one.